Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about typing again. Uh, we're going to be talking specifically about typing uh, when you encounter circular imports, uh, which happens pretty often because uh, sometimes a class will depend on a class and then that class might take an instance of a parent class or, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can end up with circular imports. And I'm going to show you, you know, a, a broken version and then how to fix it in two different ways because the, uh, the, the um, implementation of this changes based on which language version you're targeting. Uh, but anyway, let's set up a very simple circular example just to get started with. Um, so actually, uh, let's make a.py, which is going to have class A, and maybe class A has a method that takes a B, uh, and I don't know, returns int. <laughs> this is gonna be a very silly, simple example. Um, from B, import B. And uh, maybe this calls b dot baz or whatever, uh, and that has some side effect. Or uh, return two times b dot baz. Sure. Um, and uh, you know this code looks fine on its own. We import b. Note that this module doesn't actually reference b besides the type annotation, and that part's important for this. Um, you know, we'll 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 actually change how the cycle works depending on that. Um, cool. So that's that's a dot pi. Let's make b dot pi b.py, and I have class b, and class b has to have a baz method which returns an integer with no arguments, uh, or it doesn't, I guess it could return, no, it has to be an integer, um, I don't know, 9001. And uh, maybe baz also has a method which is, I don't know, register a, which takes an a instance. Um, uh, a items dot append a. I don't know, something like that, just a very silly example. Dev init self none self dot a items equals this. Um, and again, since we have a type annotation for a here, we need to import it. Um, now, actually, I mentioned that this doesn't use the actual class b here. Either of the modules could. Um, not not both of the module scope, though. Uh, if they used it internally, you would have to do uh, circular, uh, you would solve circular imports in this normal way that you solve circular imports, which is to defer your import inside of functions. Um, but if we do from a import a, and we try and run this now, let's say we make another module t.py, which, you know, does from a import a and from b import b, and we make a, um, an a, a inst and b inst equals b and maybe we call a inst was it foo i forget <laughs> what was the method here uh foo uh so so we have we input from a we input from b and we construct two and we call this foo method for whatever reason and if we run this python 3t.py you get this import error uh can an import name a from partially initialized module a most likely due to a circular import and a really cool bit of, of history here is uh i actually added this messaging to python for for front import so um the reason this messaging exists at all which is a, a great hint this has saved this has saved me having to explain circular imports so many times the old error message is pretty bad um this is what it used to be before then um, cannot import name a and you would have to know that like oh wait this this uh you know a file appears twice in the in the import hierarchy here uh, but this their import message is much better but anyway that's not what we're trying to talk about today but it is a cool thing that i added to python 3.8 um what we want to do here is we want to not actually have a circular import again like neither of these modules actually depend on having this a available or b in the other file um, so what we can do is we can break the cycle by using a typing import. Um, so what we're going to do for that is from typing import uh, type checking. Now, of course, you could also refactor these modules to not have a cycle. Uh, this particular example, I don't think it's possible to refactor them to not have a cycle. I guess you could use a protocol instead of the concrete A here um, and do it that way. But, you know, that's <laughs> maybe splitting hairs a little bit too much. Um, so what you can do here is say if type checking... Uh, import this only when you're doing type checking. So type checking is a special boolean and it is uh, always defined to be false. Uh, from typing import type checking. I think I've probably gone over this at some other point. Um, so it, it's always defined to be false. 
and uh, it allows you to hint to the type checker where these things come from, but it doesn't have any runtime uh, implications. Uh, now note that type checking will be true during type checking time, and, and MyPy will follow this and figure that out. Um, so we still have one problem. Uh, if we run this now, Python 3 utpy you'll see that we get A is not defined. Uh, so, and, and this harkens back to a previous video, which I talked about with name errors and attribute errors in type annotations. Um, and there's two solutions to that. One, I mean, the easiest one is from future import annotations, uh, which implicitly puts quoting around uh, all of these. And so now, uh, now our t.py runs successfully. You know, the, the other way to solve the forward annotations problem is the uh, is the quoting solution here. Okay, that's one way to solve this. However, type checking is kind of new-ish in uh, Python. Let me open up the typing module here. Um, and we search for type checking. Uh, so this actually has two different introduction versions uh, because it was introduced in a patch version. So if you're if you're using Python 3.5.2 or below, uh, or I guess 3.5.1 or 3.5.0, you cannot use type checking because um, it was introduced in a patch version. So this is something to look out for. Then again, Python 3.5 is end of life now, so you should worry about that. Uh, I actually wrote a flagate module, flagate typing imports. Uh, to help you guard against this particular set of failures, uh, because you know there's a bunch of things that uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of things that have changed in the typing module in patch versions, and so it's something that you want to be very careful and look out for. Uh, but anyway, if you don't have access to if type checking, um, you would use instead if false. And this looks a little bit silly, but MyPy knows to follow this to find where the import definition is. So. Um, this also works um, if you happen to target old versions of Python. This is this is also true if you're doing other uh, type checking things as well. But anyway, that's how you handle circular imports in annotations. Uh, the trick is to you know defer one of one or more of the imports so that it's not circular at runtime, but it is circular at type checking time, and uh, your type checker should be able to figure out those cycles appropriately. Anyway, hopefully this was useful. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.